Welcome to the vlog. It is February 20th, my birthday weekend. Just kidding, I usually don't make a big deal out of my birthday. All I wanted to do the day of was to eat a Cinnabon and watch Judge Judy. And that evening we did just that and it was awesome. Today is super exciting because we are going to go see some wolves. That's a sentence that I don't say often. Technically, we're going to see them tomorrow. It is located in a little town called Julian, which is an hour away from San Diego. So we figure we head down tonight Night, grab a bite, sleep in tomorrow, and then head out. And of course, I'm gonna bring you guys along. So let's pack and let's head out. such a trip down memory lane. It was my favorite place to go to get boba and to study at, so I had to make a pit stop. <laughs> Got a hot jasmine milk tea with mini boba. So excited. How is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All your boba so, dreams. So worth the dairy. We're here! We got to our little inn, our little holiday inn. It's really cute. Shirts in the back. Chilling. And we just had this genius idea. There's a 7 Eleven six minutes away, so we might possibly walk there and grab some snacks and then come back and watch some Judge Judy. <laughs> I feel like we could use a chill night in so we can rest up. We have this little grab and go breakfast. Ooh, blueberry muffin. Whoa, this is totally reasonable. Shivani yogurt. Oh my god, is this coffee? Oh no, it's juice. Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Oh dang, this is so dangerous. Oh, uh, you too have chunky monkey. Uh, it's oh, too dangerous. Oh snap. It's too dangerous. It's either fruit cup or ice cream. <laughs> da -da. All right. I'm all about the fruit cup. Though. We should be responsible. Edible cookie dough. There's so many different kinds of Kit Kats. Dark chocolate, mint, white. <sighs> that was a very productive trip. We got a little haul going on. Uh, yes, we have a, a Lucky Charms bar. Yeah. The cereal bar. I've never had the those. The cereal bar. I just remember commercials for these when I was a kid. Milk and cereal bars. Everything but the mold. <laughs> I've never had those, so I'm really excited. Got some dark chocolate Kit Kat yeah. thing going on. And then and then fruit. See, it's it's really healthy. Yeah. See, because we also got fruit. And then hairspray. The important things in life. Watch some Jets today. <laughs> The next day, we went to grab some breakfast at Public House. All the brunch places were packed because it was Sunday morning, prime time for brunch. So we found this place because they seated us right away and we were able to order some simple breakfast, some eggs, breakfast potatoes. The breakfast potatoes were so good. Oh my goodness, you're so cute. Quite loud. <laughs> it's good, it's providing extra shit. Wait, hat transition. Uh. After breakfast, we just walked around the area and grabbed some coffee. We just got done with breakfast and we're making a pit stop, grab some coffee. Then we're gonna drive to Julian, which is the town where the Wolf Sanctuary is. It's an hour and a half away, so yeah, that should be fun. We're gonna see some wolves today. made it to the Wolf Sanctuary. We are lining up. And uploading a stupid TikTok. And uploading a TikTok. Go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be two wolf packs that we'll be touring. And Whoa, did she tell you that? How'd no, you know? I looked it up. They're both endangered and it's January, so it's mating season for the wolves. So yeah, we'll, we'll be seeing a cute little wolf pack family. Kurt, do you have a wolf pun for us? 
Um, I could probably think of something really bad. We're, we're like 12 minutes early, so we have time to kill. Oh man, these are gonna be really, really bad. What would it be called if the leader of the wolf pack went gambling? An alphabet. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> What's a wolf's favorite, um, composer? Uh, Beethoven? Bey? What? Be like beta. Uh, no, this one was much more direct. I was going with, oh, you're like gradually zooming in on like my... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it would be Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Mm. <laughs> Every wolf's favorite composer. <laughs> Proud of Alphabet. I don't know. No, like, I, I liked, liked Alphabet. <laughs> um, do you have a wolf pun? Um, mm, this one's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Where do the wolves go when they're hungry? To Wolfgang Puck. <laughs> <laughs> that joke's a howler. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> so when it was time for the tour to start, we drove three quarters of a mile on this dirt path. It was quite a bumpy ride. I was worried my tiny little Prius wouldn't survive because we drove through some pretty jagged rocks on the way up, but luckily it was a short drive. I apologize for the audio coming up. It was quite windy up in the mountains. in this enclosure. She's going to be around seven years old this year. Uh, she's a beautiful lady. Hey, this wolf is uh, mom and of she lives too. in here with her two daughters, so. Tulisi and Poppy. Poppy's oh the one gosh. that's coming up to us right now, and Tulisi's oh, the one that's sticking in the back. Tulisi's actually the most shy of these wolves, so she usually sticks around in the back. Uh, God, look at her as you guys can see, they're staring at the uh, So these like the are smallest. northwestern yeah. gray wolves. They used to roam uh, the lower 48 states. They're actually in every single state in the lower 48 states, except for Hawaii. Uh, that was a little too far for them to swim. Before early settlers came in, they had wonderful relationships with them. In the contiguous United States, wolf declines were caused by the expansion of agriculture, the decimation of the wolf's main prey species, such as the American bison, and extermination campaigns. Agricultural workers would set traps, poison, or kill wolves because they viewed them as a threat to their livestock. Predatory controls and human expansion from the late 1800s to the mid-1900s made the Mexican gray wolf the rarest wolf in North America. By the late 1960s, it had virtually disappeared in the southwestern United States. It was listed as endangered on the Federal Endangered Species List in 1976. Fortunately, in 1977, the Mexico and U.S. governments collaborated in capturing all remaining Mexican wolves in the wild to prevent extinction and establish captive breeding programs for reintroduction. Hands, tin cans that bang around on each other, that's enough to scare them. Flashing lights. Uh, that was indeed a wolf howl. More on that later. The reason why they are called great wolves is because they have a double layer coat in the winter. Their outer coat is water resistant and holds color. Their undercoat is all gray. <laughs> He's howling because the wolves are in mating season. In this pack, it is Emma, the dominant female, the smaller one over there, and his brother. Emma and his brother are a pair, so he is kind of a lone wolf. It has also been found that wolves would sometimes howl to their own pack out of affection. A wolf's howl can carry up to 10 miles and a bit less in wooded areas. U.S. Fish and Wildlife did collect all 13 of the Mexican gray wolves to start a breeding program and their species survival plan, their SSP, was also started. Sadly, only seven of those 13 wolves were unrelated enough to start breeding. So as you can imagine, even today, their gene pool is very, 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 very shallow. Uh, we have a lot of problems with genetic bottlenecking. So everything that comes to the Mexican wolves is all about genetics. She talked a little bit about cross-fostering, a practice where biologists place newborn wolf pups into a different similar age litter in the wild with the hope that the receiving pack will raise them as their own. 
The goal of cross-fostering is ultimately to boost the genetic diversity and population of wolves. As of April 2020, there are 311 wolves in the Pacific Northwest, and as of 2019, 163 wolves in the Southwest. The 2019 end-of-year census recorded the population of Mexican wolves had increased to 163 from 131. They're so playful! Here you see them running around the little girl. Like she mentioned earlier, wolves oh, like children so because they remind them of their pups. Tiny humans are not a concept in their minds. Apparently, them running around the gate is also a sign of territorial display. Oh my goodness, they like the little girl. They like staring at her. That's all territorial displays. Uh, but like I said, as soon as we go in there, they run in the opposite direction. <laughs> So we just finished the wolf tour. That was so cute, just seeing them up front and in person. That was such a cute experience. I learned so much. The Mexican gray wolves will have a chance of being released back into the wild, but unfortunately the Northwestern, currently they do not have a release program in California. It varies state by state, so they will be kept in captivity. Do you hear that? That was a howl. There's a wild Kurt. It's a wild Kurt. Oh my god. <laughs> what do you think was the coolest part about the tour? Probably the first three wolves. They were mm -hmm. huge and enormous. Yes. Especially the one wolf. I think her name was Poppy. Dude, oh. She was like bigger than her mom. Yeah. Yeah, the, the mom, surprisingly, was the smallest one. I know. It was like when she was like, oh yeah, that one's the mom. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> the North American gray wolves were significantly bigger than the Mexican gray wolves. Yeah. And you can definitely tell the difference. Totally. The Mexican gray wolf looked like a like a big coyote mm -hmm. kind of the first three that we saw they were they were really big yeah but the mexican gray wolves looked a lot more active didn't they they, they looked were... like more alert and they looked like they're more likely to survive in the wild they were definitely running around a lot more yeah they were playing tag yeah it was so <laughs> cute this is a lot of fun thanks for planning it <laughs> Hat transition out. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about these amazing creatures as much as I did. I will leave a link down below if you wish to visit the California Wolf Center someday, as well as a donation link. They are 100% nonprofit, so all your proceeds will go directly back to the wolves. And that is it for me. I hope you guys take care, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!